Recording in progress. Hello, everyone. Welcome to AWS Recitations. I'm Zhe. In this series of recitations, we are going to show you how you can use AWS to train your models for the homework part twos. So I just want to say that AWS is definitely more complex to use than CoLab. However, it is also the biggest cloud service provider in the world by, by market share. So having hands-on experience on AWS will undoubtedly benefit you in the long run. To give you a brief overview of, of how you will use AWS, um, essentially you will be using one or more EC2 instances with a GPU to train your model. Each instance is essentially a virtual machine with its boot disk provided by EBS. You may optionally use EFS, a shared network drive, to store some important data. During the registration process, you may be asked to select your preferred, preferred um, deployment region. Be sure to select US East Ohio because this is one of the cheapest regions available. You'll be given vouchers worth $150 in total for your homeworks and projects, so spend them wisely. There are always students who ended up getting horribly overcharged because they forgot to terminate the EC2 instances. So your lesson 101 is about managing your bill. To do that, simply search for billing in the search bar on top and uh, select billing. You'll, you'll be redirected to the billing management console here. The credits page is where you'll be redeeming your, credit, your vouchers. And take note that the vouchers only offset costs for the current billing cycle. And for AWS, that's a monthly cycle. So be sure to redeem your voucher before you start using AWS for training. So besides pay atten paying attention to your credit card bill, you can also check, for, check the AWS bill here on the, using the bills page. So let me select one of the months where, when I was still using the AWS for tra model training. So the, the total amount of $0 here is a bit misleading, but it's also a good sign. So this is the amount that actually gets charged to your credit card. So since it's zero, it means my credit cards were not, were not charged. But how much credit did I use? Uh, expanding the credit section show, reveals that $55 worth of credits were, were used in these services. To look at how much each service has cost, I simply expand its cor the, the corresponding section. For example, since I use EFS for storage, uh, it automatically creates a 35-day backup policy, which actually costs me quite a lot. So um, if you use EFS, I would advise you to shorten the backup period for, to seven days. Of course, most of my credits were spent on compute. So as you can see, I am using G4DN large, which is a um, GPU-based instance. So, um, to make sure that you do not always overspend, you can create a budget in the budget page here. So let's do that. Sim uh, click, create, click create a bu budget and uh, select a cost, cost budget. Right? And you'll simply leave, leave it as a monthly uh, recurrent budget. And let's say you want your budget to be $50. I'll uh, give you a name. Let's say 1175. So here you have to add a alert threshold. You can add multiple ones. For example, I can say when 90% of my budget is reached, actually reached, send me an email. You can add other alert threshold as well, if you if you like to. So click next and uh, create budget. So the so this would allow. AWS to send to notify you when your but when uh, at your alert threshold. This way, you will most you will not be overcharged. Hopefully. So if you if in case you are overcharged, uh, contact support from AWS Council here, the support center, and create a case. They um may do a partial refund, but there's no guarantee. And unfortunately, TAs and Prof cannot help you with that. All right. So now let's see how we can launch an instance. So uh, go to simply search for EC2 here, and uh, click here. Click on the EC2 services, and you'll be you'll be redirected to the EC2 management dashboard. Well, for new users, before you can increase the limit, before you can uh, create an in instance, you need to increase the limit. So go to the limit page here, 
select a request thread running instance and raise the uh, limit for on demand G, P, and standard instances. You can use my values here as a reference and uh, click request, request limit, uh, limit increase separately for each of these uh, limits. If you're using spot instance, make sure you also uh, increase the limit for the request instance for G, P, and standard instance. You, can, you, you have to do the, do the same thing. So after you have uh, in submitted the request, it usually takes two or three days for them to uh, reprove it. Once that's done, you'll be able to launch instance from the instance page. And, and that's all for this, for this video. Uh, in, in the next video, I'll be, I'll be guiding you through how to actually launch an instance. Recording stopped.